Hello everyone and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. It's Gaming Friday. I'm Gary. And I'm Jeff. And today, Jeff, I'm going to introduce you and our audience to Neverwinter. It's Dungeons okay. and Dragons. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, devel D &D, eh? Developed by uh, Cryptic Studios and published by Perfect World Entertainment. Right. Uh, yep, it is a Dungeons and Dragons game, but right now, Jeff, I'm going to jump us straight into the action. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, already been playing this game a fair amount, and right now I am in the Well of Dragons, and I've just jumped straight into a heroic encounter. Right, okay. Uh, the Well of Dragons is an expansion for Neverwinter, which came out on the Xbox uh, about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago now. Okay. Um... Now, right now, the Xbox version is quite a few modules and expansions behind the PC version, which came out, I think, early 2013. Okay, so the so console version is playing a little bit of catch-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then again, I also didn't start playing this game the instant it came out, because uh, I, I scoff at MMOs. Or rather, I used to. Okay, so this is an MMORPG D&D, &D, yeah? D &D Correct. D&D rules. Yeah. So it's set that, in the that... world of Neverwinter, which is a which is a faction or fraction of the Dungeons and Dragons sort of universe. All right. Okay. So is that um, is is this like an IP that is also cross publisher? Or is this just their IP of of D and D? I think it's just theirs. I mean, it's tied in with Wizards of the Coast. And it does also tie in with okay. Neverwinter Nights, and it does also, I think the PC version is also up to date with sort of the latest actual tabletop Dungeons and Dragons sort of publishing. Okay. So it is all tied in very, very well. It's all the actual names and characters. Mm -hmm. And where to begin with Neverwinter? I mean, yeah, I, right so now what, I know I'm showing you me battling the, uh, these dragons. So, so, so right now I'll tell you straight away. I've, you know, I'm. Not you're looking at the screen. If this is the first time you're looking at the screen, it's kind. It's going to be. It, Oh, you're going to be overwhelmed with I, everything that's on the screen and everything that's going on. Yeah, so for, so straight away I'll say I'm not, you know, I'm not typically an MMO player. Me, me uh, neither. This so, is my first MMORPG. Yeah. It really is. Other than, I mean, well, I played Destiny. I guess you could say Destiny was an introduction for me into that sort of game. Mm -hmm. Because that, that I was told that that's an MMO light. Right. So I was like, okay, well, I, you know, I, I played Destiny. I enjoyed it to a point until I ran out of things to do mm -hmm. so quickly. And I was waiting for a game, to be honest. I was waiting for a game to come out. I was waiting for The Witcher 3, but there was nothing in the meantime. Yeah. And Neverwinter is a free to play game, free to download. Right. Okay. And I was like, and I, I was cautious of anything that's free mm -hmm. because there's always a catch. Yeah. And of course, this game does have a catch because in order to progress, you could you could pay to win essentially. You could buy what people would call your gear score, okay. which is you could go straight away and buy the best armor, the best artifacts, the best refinement stones, the best companion, and. But then I'm like, well, what's the point? Right. Because mm -hmm. you you've paid to to be able to beat anything in the game, but then there's nothing in the game for you to play. So the model is. Um farm to progress and if you don't have much time and you want to catch up with your mates pay to progress quicker absolutely yes now there is i mean once once you do get your once you build your character i'm just going to start there uh there's there's quite a few to begin with when you start the game up the first time some of the character races are locked to you you have yeah. to purchase them in game which you can eventually earn the game's currency by playing the game so you right. never have to spend any so there's, money. There's nothing in the game that you have to buy to to get the full progression. There's not you. You can earn the games. What you, no. what you could spend with real money, you could earn in this game. Now, I, what I'm also showing you in this video is a very very fast clear run of these five dragons. Okay, um, yeah. So you're going from dragon to dragon. Now, one thing I've got to say, I'm watching this right now, and this yeah. is laggy as shit. Oh, you noticed that? <laughs> you know, I've introduced I introduced a few players to this game because uh, obviously my my destiny sort of faction split up, and I I went to this game and I tried to get a couple of them to come over and play it, and they switched it off within five minutes and deleted it, going, nope, mm -hmm. no, not my type of game. Yeah. Despite the fact they're now playing Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> yeah. They said it wasn't their type of game, <laughs> and it was the lag. The lag put them off straight away because you, you do the first mission on the beach after building your character and rolling your sort of virtual dice. Mm -hmm. You come to this beach area, and then you go to what's called the Protector's Enclave, which is sort of the hub where you get all your missions. Yeah, and 
it can have up to 80 players in an instance yeah. in those zones and it can be overwhelming the map you know is pretty big they've only just recently introduced the the map which is in the bottom right corner of the screen do you um... and so and so the lag did put a lot of people off now you can see here i'm getting my rewards for killing each of those five dragons right okay. uh, you can see there i got a purple which is nice i'll drop that on the market house later the blues there i'll refine down into other equipment to try and make it better do they um do they have these kind of lag problems on the PC? Um, I believe not, no. I think a lot of the server issues are console related, but I think the PC gamers have had their issues as well. But because hearing it's been running longer on PC, I think those issues have mostly resolved. Okay. But console, the console version of this game has an incredible amount of lag. Uh, I was hoping to catch an instance in, in this recording where the game will just stop altogether for like three seconds, make a horrible death gargling noise, right. and then resume wherever it was. <laughs> oh, oh dear! Uh, it used to be that when that happened, the game would it would just shut down, close up, game over, done, load the game back up again. <laughs> At least it would drop you exactly where you were. Yeah. Um, odds are though that you will be dead if you were currently in combat at the time. Right. Great. So right now I've just uh, I've just got to Tiamat and uh, I'm just going to go and uh, identify. I'm going to use scrolls of identification <clears throat> to uh, see what the actual item is before I can then start Let's refining it down. Um, so I'm just showing you some of my inventory here. You see some of the ones I've got at the bottom here are the the uh, the greater marker potency goes for about a hundred thousand crystals. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see there, I currently have 192,000 total. Right. Uh, I have that's, right. That's these are all the, the other currency. currencies in the game. And uh, okay, on top of that, now. there's also just a few more other currencies in the game. Right. Okay. <laughs> Those other ones at the bottom don't really need to worry about too much. These are the professions. Uh, there's a lot of professions in the game. These are some of the resources that you'll use for those said professions. Right now, okay. I've only really specialized in two, uh, three, really. Uh, right. Uh, there, there's a lot to take in, but as you level up from level one up through level 60, yeah. each of the mission givers will explain to you, this is how a companion works. This is how a mount works. This is how your professions work. Mm -hmm. As you can see right now, I'm specializing in jewel crafting. Uh, a lot of these, as you can see, some are between 14 minutes and 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 14 hours. Oh right, it's a bit like Warframe. So you have a time. You have a limit. timer. So once you start crafting, you then have to come back later at a period of time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I you I'm pay sort of to, to, to speed them those, up. Yes, right? of course. Yeah, you you yeah. can pay on everything to speed everything up, should you wish. But right. I'm a lazy gamer. I'm paying. I'm not. I'm not paying anything. I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Now, right there, I tried to get into Tiamat, mm -hmm. but I got disconnected. I got server, not responding, error, and Correct. failed to get in. So uh, I'm decided that I'll try for the next tier map, but in the meantime, I'm going to try and do one of the daily dungeons, which is Epic Lost Mouth. I'm running it with one of my uh, friends at the moment, Fatty Bum, who's uh, currently a trickster rogue, mm -hmm. which is huge, massive, deadly amounts of damage per second. Uh, I'm currently a cleric, a mage, so mm -hmm. when we were fighting those dragons earlier, I really didn't have that much to do. Right. But in a, in an epic dungeon like this, my responsibility is to keep everyone alive. So I can keep a, an eye on everyone's health bars on the left side. Yeah. I have an arrange, uh, arrangement of abilities that I can use. Right now, uh, I have the uh, an astral shield, which I can put down, mm -hmm. which will give everyone uh, temporary hit points. Mm -hmm. also um, buff their armor value uh, I also have what's uh, like a bastion of health which is the uh, big circular one that I can put down which will heal everyone inside okay. I also have healing word which goes down in a long stream you'll see me use all these abilities I'll spam spam a lot of them yeah uh, I have to say though there's there's an, there's specific events that occur every day in in neverwinter there's um, sort of giveaways of diamonds if you will there's like a skirmish hour a dungeon hour a player versus player hour right and uh, 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 professions hour lately the community of the game has really really tested my patience because there is what we call boot and looters that is yeah you're playing through a dungeon you kill one of the bosses, and you see one of the epic or expensive drops fly out of the boss. It yeah. can it, that it can be valued up to like four hundred thousand diamonds. Yeah. And as soon as you see it drop, all of a sudden, pop! 
you booted back to the main menu of the game. And that's because everyone else in the team just voted to kick you out. Reducing the chance of someone they don't know getting the loot. So what you'll often find is a team of three players, because th it's a five player dungeon, yeah. the three players will boot out the two that they don't know, and between the three of them, get the loot. And it has happened to me every single so would day. would that loot normally be shared between, between five, Well, well ev all five people would roll for it. Virtual dice, basically. Uh, a digital roll. And, so it gets and the winner gets between... it. No, the winner gets it. One person gets it. Right. So they boot out the other two players. It's down to three then that get it, and it's so out it's of their group of three, so they'll share it between themselves right. over and over anyway. And so <laughs> I, 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 right now I've potentially lost out on over 800,000 diamonds for the amount of times I've been booted, and I've seen those drops go down. That's pretty it is sitch. disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, I have. I, I get irate, and I try not to. I remind myself it's just a game. These people yeah. really must have nothing else in their lives <laughs> if they if they stoop to such a measure. I, yeah. And I, I, I've reported those players. I've sent abusive messages to those players. I'm not the sort of person to send abusive <laughs> messages to other people. But when it happens in the heat of the moment, I tell you now, it will. <laughs> it will test your patience. So yeah. I, I do recommend if you. Oh, I'm going to consider playing the game. Team up with people you know. Right. It, it, I, I do recommend, you know, getting together with a group, knowing you're going to play as a group to begin with. Yeah. Because at least then you can level up from level 1 all the way up to level 60. And that's when the game really begins, once you hit to level 60. Right. Because once you get to level 60, certain areas become available to you. By then you would have progressed in one of the, the Tyranny of Dragons campaigns opening up more areas to you, including this dungeon, which is locked to you until you get to a certain gear score. Yeah. And there, there is a variety of things to do in this game, from going and doing sort of the story quests, which I will say are redundantly awful. Okay. And the voice acting in this game is the worst. I will say it is one of the <laughs> worst voice acted games I've ever played. <laughs> but after a right. while... I, you kind of laugh. You know, you end up starting to quote some of these ridiculous lines of dialogue. And if you're mm. with a group, you you can have some fun with it. You really can. Yeah. Bad voice acting is not gonna is not the end of this game. It really isn't. Okay. Um, but there is so much to do. There is oh, right, everyone's dying right now except for me. I need to go rescue everyone. Um, and oh, I'm dead too. <laughs> that's kind of embarrassing. Oops. It's really embarrassing. Um, yeah. So if you die in a dungeon, you go back to the last bonfire, you'll take an injury. Uh, right now you can see in the top left bar, I've got a body injury, which has now reduced my hit points okay. considerably. Um, you can use injury kits to sort of get rid of them. If you get knocked down, you do take uh, a sort of a sickness, which means uh, you sort of at a disadvantage as well. Okay. Um, but, you know, th everything you can, you can cure yourself with gold or just by standing at a bonfire for a few minutes. I'm just going to quickly loot here. There was no epic drop, so no one's getting kicked. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was just the first boss of this dungeon. We now need to make our way downstairs to go and eventually fight the twin scorpions before fighting the giant dragon at the end. Did you just leave a guy behind? Uh, everyone will catch up. It's fine. Um, I will say, though, that if you go AFK in this game and don't tell the other players, you are likely to come back to find yourself booted. Right. <laughs> but as I was saying, yeah, there's so much to do in the game. There's the, the skirmishes, there's the, the dungeons, there's uh, the heroic encounters, and with the fact that there's going to be four more DLCs for the game coming out next month uh, in September, so that's September 2015, uh, including the Elemental Evil campaign, uh, plus I believe also the PvP campaign. I have no idea how m much of this is going to work. I've not really researched what the PC version has over this one. I know there's quite a few bug fixes <coughs> that are going to that are to come. Mm. Uh, more character classes that are going to be introduced, including a paladin, which makes me wish I would have waited instead of building a cleric. So I mean, what uh, what's good about this uh, in terms of PvP? I mean, why would you Play this over Dark Souls if you're a PvP RPG player. Uh, if you were a PvP player, you you don't you not you don't want to pick up Neverwinter to play PvP. I cannot sell Neverwinter you alone on player versus player. Right. Uh, uh, because the 
the player versus player in the game right now, I mean, they're, they're adding a PvP campaign soon and it's getting its own expansion, which it sorely needs. Because right now I think there's two or three possible maps for PvP, which uh, consist of, they're pretty much asymmetrical maps. Uh, so, you know, you could split it down the middle and the, each side of the map would be identical to the other, which is fine. And it's a team game of 5v5. And there are three control points on the map. One at your base, one at their base, and one at the middle. Mm -hmm. Whoever controls the, those points the longest will win the match. Right. But it can get... I mean, I said I can't sell it to you on that, but I know I've played with players on here that play it just for the PvP, which it does, ba it does baffle me right. that they could. But they become experts in it because the you know the the PvP does has its own armor class. It has its own enchantments that you can use. It has tenacity, which is strictly just for PvP, and yeah. all of the different character classes can make such a difference. Uh, I remember being in a PvP game. I'm the I'm a cleric, and there was another cleric in the room, and I was like, well, we've got no damage on our team. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we managed to outmaneuver the other players by taking over by defending our command point and sitting on the middle one. Both me and the other cleric made sure that our three other characters that weren't even heavy DPS never went down in the fight. Right. So the fight literally lasted six minutes yeah. before we managed to kill the other team. But by the time they had all respawned and come down, we comfortably held the two points the entire time. Mm -hmm. And I never would have expected that. Mm -hmm. I've been with another cleric before and we just got ripped to shreds. Just, yeah. So the variety of different character classes and the fact that what sort of level you are, what items you have, transfers directly right into it. Mm -hmm. And I can say now, it is really easy to build a terrible class. You can get really good armor, you can get really good weapons, but if you've built your class wrong, if you've spent your skill points in the wrong areas, you're screwed. <laughs> right. You can save up the in-game currency and buy what's called a respec, yeah. which allows you to go and respend all your points. Okay. And... It's sort of uh, a term of abuse that I see thrown around a lot in the community in this game is go buy yourself a respec because you suck. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, this cleric is not my first character. My first character was a hunter ranger. Mm. And the amount of times I got told I sucked, right. it, I, I started to believe I sucked. <laughs> and I sort of, um, I sort of have... Uh, an affinity to, to, to hating towards hunter rangers in this game. I I don't hate them all. That I mean, to be fair, the, the highest amount of DPS I've ever seen from a single character in the game did come from a hunter ranger. Right. But on average, the hunter rangers I've come across in this game are not too good. They're not built well. They're not to be well. They're, they're, have you they're, done they're, any they're, research on builds? I have done research on builds, and the best way to do it is to mix up between using the bow and switching to the blades. I went for mainly an archery class character, which turns out is absolutely brilliant in PvP because I can root enemies to the ground, I can stun shot them so they can't do anything for ages, and then I can just rain arrows down on them until my teammates come in and finish them off. Mm -hmm. But in player player versus enemy, my Hunter Ranger is just, just doesn't cut it. So I actually retired the character. I still use it, and there is a bonus for keeping multiple characters, is that having multiple characters enables you to refine what's called the rough astral diamonds, yeah. which is the rough currency that you need to turn into actual diamonds, which with the actual diamonds you can turn into Zen, and Zen is what you use to purchase items in the game with. Right. I know it sounds long-winded, but if you play the game for yeah. for 24 hours, 30 hours, you <laughs> sort of get the hang of how everything's, how everything's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, MMOs are not pick-up-and-play-quickly games, but uh, I took a chance with this game and actually stuck with it and realized I was having a lot of fun because of the gameplay, because of the way the combat mechanic works. It, I don't just stand there spamming one move, although it might appear that I am. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of move. It appears there's a lot like of you're move spamming one of four moves. That's what it looks like. Indeed, yeah. The, you can see the three main moves I have there. There's of course the three on the other side of that. I can also empower the moves. Plus, I have my daily ability. Uh, I, do, I vary them depending on what dungeon I'm doing or what encounter I'm engaged in. Mm. I am struggling to keep everyone alive here, but... Uh... Yeah, um, I mean, so, what do you think that... Uh, what, or what, do you, what would you say if I was to say, well, you started playing it because you didn't have anything else to play and you got hooked to the... 
addictive like roulette style loot and i, like, I blame destiny just, for just, that just got on the Definitely. currency train yeah very i'm on mu- the currency train, very much yeah. like the same kind of scheme they used in destiny and they're yeah. using many mmos now which are free to play which is to get you on that on that loot train yeah and give uh, you, get you get you putting in the hours for the random dice rolls you know? yeah now i knew what i knew that i was going to be getting into that going into it yeah and i gave it a chance and yeah like a gambler, I got addicted. Yeah. And I just wanted to keep putting more coins into those lockboxes to yeah. see what I would get. Yeah. Because coming into the game, I didn't really do any research when I first started playing it. I didn't know what the... All I kept seeing was I kept getting these lockboxes like, from every enemy I dropped. And I'm like, wow, where do I get the keys for this? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, they cost like a pound a key. Yeah. I got 80 of them. I've only been playing for two weeks. We're like, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, so the game does really drive home, you know, like give us money give us money give us money yeah but i'm telling you now testament now if you want to if you've got time to spare and it, you don't have to pay actual money you can mm. earn the items it does yes take a lot of grinding but it's it's it is very rewarding uh some some games i get tired of the loot system in this one i've not i've not tired of it yet I, it mm-hmm. still works for me yeah um, like I said, if I get bored of doing one thing, I'll just go and do something else within the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do also have sporadic events. Right now, there is sort of a summer event going on. Uh, I did actually go there once, and the bright, colourful visuals of their summer festival party were so offensive to my eyes, I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take the environment. And there was people chasing pigs and chickens everywhere. It's like, what's going on? And yet, just a few weeks ago, there was half of the half of Neverwinter was on fire as it was under siege from some dark army that you had to go and protect. And okay. so that was a completely different sort of thing that happens. Okay. So there's always something on top of whatever it is you're usually doing in the game that's happening. So right now I'm in the Lots Lost, Lost Mouth battle. This dragon is particularly nasty. He's one of the toughest dragons in the game. Uh, there's only one dragon that I would say is probably nastier, and that's uh, at the end of Castle Never, which is the toughest dungeon in the game at the moment. And that's because that dragon has sort of adds, or what I call gribblies, with him at the same mm. time. Yeah. Uh, but this dragon can be so nasty because he can three-hit combo you, um, where he'll hit you with one, he'll knock you backwards, he'll knock yeah. you on the floor, and as you're standing up, you'll get hit with another one. And then he'll bounce you off with another one straight into the lava pit. And by the time you stand up in the lava pit, you're dead. dead. And no one can come out there and rescue you. So right now I'm just going to try and spam loads of of, of armor buffs in the middle to give them temporary hit points. Try and keep them alive and spam all my heals dead center. I, I always find issues, again, with the hunter rangers or other characters that are on the outskirts of this map. Because I can't heal them because all my heals are focused dead center. Right. All right, it's a little trick to this boss. Once, once the dragon's half gone, once half his health's gone, he'll fly off, fill the entire room with lava, other than this dragon seal, which uh, we try and try and avoid, like there, from having the rocks landing on our heads. How do you know the rocks coming? You can see the sort oh, the of red. aerial effect on the on the, on the ground just I under my feet red, there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was saying about the the gameplay, the actual combat mechanic. It's interesting because you you are you do find yourself moving around the battlefield a lot. You can see where the sort of aerial damage is going to be and sort of move out of it. Yeah. Uh, and each of the character classes all have different combat styles, so it, it does vary, especially as sort of what team you're playing as. Whether you're going to go into a dungeon with a preset team or whether you're going to go in with randoms, you will find a lot of people will boot players with the lowest gear score or boot players that don't complement the team mm-hmm. or whatever dungeon they're going into like i said the, there's a there's a few other things that i've i have gripes about the community that that do in this game is that when you're doing a dungeon and uh you you'll find that random loot drops all the time yeah and the weakest players i will say they are the other weakest players will pick up everything Mm-hmm. Absolutely everything, and yeah. that's 
and and the ever annoying thing oh, is no. everyone's dying and the ever annoying thing is is that people will pick up shit oh, no. whilst you're in combat yeah so when you're in combat you're sc- like my screen's filled now with this information yeah that popping up in the middle of a fight because somebody's picking up loot and everyone has to decide whether you want to <laughs> pass on it oh, greed right. on it or whether you actually need it <laughs> and so uh, I, I have when somebody else has voted to kick someone for picking up all the green <laughs> crap loot in the dungeon yeah. I've gone yeah get him out here because I can't I can't be dealing with pressing the these buttons every time he picks up loot which is sort of every three seconds you can imagine just stopping what you're doing deciding on whether you need it or not so the loot so, won't be uh, gone uh, the loot will stay there the so loot stays there right, indefinitely. indefinitely I mean even in the middle of a boss fight like mm. an end boss fight there's like 40 gribblies running around on the screen and people are like yeah I need that I want that pick it up and I'm like it'll still be there once the boss is dead Yeah. so if you're a current Neverwinter player and you do do that you're pissing everyone off and if you're wondering why you're getting kicked that's why now I can understand some players need all this stuff to sell it for gold or for other items get into a group that are also doing that otherwise you, you are going to knock everyone off there's a couple of other things, just a few tiny things that players gonna, uh, do in the uh, game that annoy me. Say, hang on a minute, is that they, they will step on loot. They'll step on an item that everyone can go and pick up, and it makes it impossible for you to pick it up because all you'll be able to do is interact with that player. I was going to say, hang on a minute. Earlier, you raised the point that you can get to the end of a dungeon and then Ooh. get booted and then not get any of the loot. So yes. Are, are they? <clears throat> they're probably that's their defense against it. Is trying to pick it all up straight away. But the, I mean, the thing is, you, even if you pick it up straight away, the the vote to kick time is quicker. You'll you'll mm. still be booted before the countdown timer of choice of claiming that item. Mm. It's happened. I I know. I've been in a group of another person. He's like, oh, they've just voted to kick you. <laughs> he's like, well, I'm not going to vote mm. until the loot has been claimed. Right. The loot wasn't claimed. But I still got booted, and even though he didn't vote. Nah. So <clears throat> I'm just opening my my uh, my chests here. Mm-hmm. Nothing too special. You take the one on the left for for free unless you've got a dungeon key. I'm just gonna look at the look at the stats here. I got the worst amount of damage. Uh, I only went down three times. Didn't go down that much. Well, I healed the most. That was the most important thing. Yep. If somebody was healing more than me, I'd have to rethink my character. So, just as a tip here, if you don't want to open the second chest and need to leave the dungeon, you can leave the group and then go and then leave without spending your key. Okay, so, right. <clears throat> I'm back outside the Tiamat door. Yeah. Uh, my, my instance to join the time is at 121, as you can see now, I'm just joining. When you do go into battle the Tiamat boss, uh, you will be split up from whatever group you're in. And right now, you're going to see at the top of the screen, the problem I have... Every single time I go in to fight Tiamat, server not responding. Disconnected <laughs> from server. <laughs> so I, I do have an instance time of one two one uh, to to join with with the friends that I do play with. Yeah, I never get in there on that instance. I I and the Elf and the Not they usually win when my instance loses. If I manage to get into the game quick enough to load the boss back up again, <laughs> you can't find anything on the forums about why this keeps happening. I have found one other post of one other person complaining <laughs> about getting server issues trying to join Tiamat. And that's it. No no replies. <clears throat> well, nope. at the moment, Gary, in the summary of it is is um it's an addictive loot train with loads of currencies. Yes. Um which has got cooperative combat play style typical of many mmos yeah um with terrible lag and a horrible community <laughs> <laughs> now uh, okay so and, i, I I've and, compl- oh, and I've terrible com- voice acting <laughs> and <laughs> rubbi- rubbish story <laughs> oh yeah the story in the game is non-existent really <laughs> i mean people complained about destiny not having a story the uh, the opening cutscene of this game was very pretty mm-hmm. it has no ending I mean, I, I completed Castle Never just recently, and I got to defeat the dragon from the opening cutscene of the game. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that was the end game for me, so I could stop now. So yeah, I I I realized so, I wasn't here for the story. I was waiting for the to play The Witcher Free for my story. But the thing is, I've complete I've completed The Witcher Free, and now I'm playing Neverwinter again. Mm. I'm still enjoying the loot train. I'm still enjoying the farming after so many hours. Yeah. Yes. 
it it is getting a little bit stale now, which is why I'm so excited for the four DLCs that are about to come out. New mm. enemy types, new environments, yeah. new new gear to aim for. And, I mean, you can... I've sort of been able to work the system in the game as well, where it's possible to to get certain items and sell them early on. So if you, if you get on there earlier, all of the really good loot from earlier on is going to be a lot cheaper. So if you get into a new environment, like the new DLCs that are coming next month, I'm going to get there as soon as I can, mm-hmm. get the good stuff, and be able to sell it for really expensive. And then I'll be able to make some more money to actually sustain my character. It does have its, it does have a really good economy, and it does crash every so often. So sometimes if you wanted to, you could play the market. I have a friend that does that, where he will buy diamonds and then at the right time sell them for Zen, or buy Zen and then at the right time sell them for diamonds. Right. So. Okay. Now, this Tiamat battle is, uh, it's been a bit of a, a headache for a lot of people. And again, mm-hmm. you'll probably see if you look down in the bottom left corner, the chat window can be incredibly, incredibly vulgar and offensive. Right. And quite comical at the same time. Yeah. Uh, like I said, yeah, the community for the game it does have its issues, but I, I've i had more pleasure jumping into random groups of players on this game than any other game I've played on the Xbox One. Just jumping into a group, getting into a party with complete randoms, and just getting into a conversation. Mm. Talking about our characters, talking about what items we've got, what items we're after, why we're doing this dungeon, how we're getting on. And also, between then, uh, the group of players I've just got together with, griping about other players within the game. (laughs) (laughs) So I will say that there are a lot of really good players in the game. And just like with any community, it's the bad eggs that just really stand out. the, The ones that just sour the experience so much that you do mention them. Hmm. But yeah. there, there are a lot of good people on here. And there are a lot of patient people on here that are willing to explain how the game works. And they, you know, there's people on here that will go through your character for you and go, well, perhaps you should change this and that, and this is the sort of thing you're after. You just be patient with people, and people will be patient with you. To a point, like I said, people are very easy, very easily wound up in the game and will drop people. There's a lot of greedy players on the game as well. Play it with a group... You, you'll you'll have a really good time. But right now I'm doing this, the Tiamat battle, which is the latest and the hardest sort of encounter in the game, which is 25 players instead of five against one boss. Mm, it's terribly laggy, isn't it? Like uh, it is pretty damn laggy. Yeah, I, sort of, I, know, I've, I've had I've had smoother single runs. Single digits FPS is at frames per second. Though, yeah, though, okay, Mister PC <laughs> elitist. I know, I know. Console can't keep up with PC games. Well, I don't even know if it's anything to do with the hardware. It's just like it's the server, isn't it? It just can't keep up. The Neverwinter servers, <laughs> they go down every week. They have maintenance every week. And it's a bit of a running joke, because sometimes yeah. they're like, oh, we just need to turn the servers off and back on again. It'll be an hour and a half. I mean, Two what... hours passes, and they put up a post going, yeah, it's going to be another hour. I mean, it's really and important another hour. for an always online... Uh, it's going to be all day. <laughs> always online MMO, you know, like the most important thing is the quality Secure of Secure, stable servers, yeah. absolutely. They've gotten a lot better. I can tell you now. Oh, really? It used wow. to be. It used to be a lot worse than this. Well, how the hell were you? Why did you play it, Gary? Why? I, I don't understand. Is it really that that bleak on the Xbox? Is <laughs> that few games <laughs> that this is what you had to turn to? Well, the thing is, I it was after coming off of Destiny. You know, <laughs> I was so enjoying Destiny till I hit until I realised I'd been running at the same brick wall for like a month. Yeah. And then I was like, right, it's time for something else. And so I thought I'd jump into a wall of <laughs> spikes instead <laughs> oh, but man. i i i i've, I've enjoyed enjoyed my time on everyone like I, said, I i really can't wait for the dlc for it i i, I always said i'd never play an mmo yet i to keep playing this game <laughs> it's so there is something within it that that's that's really addictive and really rewarding yeah it's it's called gambling, Gary. Yeah. It's called gambling. Well, the gambling is intrinsically fun, and that's why people love or get addicted. Or it's tr- intrinsically addictive. Well, as I mean, well. gaming in it itself is, is addictive. Uh, well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, true. But this seems to me to be pure 
gamble. This is, to me, this is no different than going down. Oh, it's just a cheaper version of going down and playing um, Fruit Machine. Yeah. You know? Like, if you wanted to, like, I've, I've got been had moments when I've been really into Fruit Machines. And they're fun. <laughs> yeah. When, when you get to, the more you get to know it, the machine, and the way the system works, and you sort of play the system, and... You know, like there's little tricks and secrets in there, which you, once you get in the know, you sort of find them out. But really, all you're doing is just spinning three things. You know, it's very, very simple mechanics and some sort of me like game surrounding that. And, uh, you know, like, but when you sort of take a step back from it, you think, well, actually what I was doing, there was no like, there's no real skill level. It was just kind of getting in the know and then all the fun is in the addictive nature of that that gamble will it come won't it come and then when it comes you get like a little adrenaline rush high yeah and and then you is, want to chase that's, it that's a huge yep. contrast <laughs> to the lows you've had when you didn't get it so then you yeah you, you chase that you just you chase, chase that, that little like, adrenaline rush and yeah, yeah but there's nothing <clears> but, but in this game it, it is satisfying to level up to get the next artifact to get the next piece of equipment in your set that you need for the set bonus to increase your gear score just a little bit more yeah I to know. upgrade your companions and uh, then equip them it, with it, their gear but it's a very short sense of satisfaction and when I compare yeah. it to games where there's a, a An skill. End. A or... skill level that I'm acquiring, you know, like a real sense of skill. Like, say, I'm recently I'm into my driving simulators. Yeah. I really enjoy things like first-person shooters. Yeah. You know, stuff where my dexterity, my skill, my strategy, real-time strategy games, yeah. for instance. You know. Yeah. Anything where well, <clears throat> this there's game... a high level of uh, the... like kind of real-world skill that the... I'm also developing. You definitely need skills to play this game. There is definitely. A lot of people in this game have said, gear score doesn't mean shit. It really doesn't. Building a good character is one thing. That's going to take a, uh, that's going to take a competent mind in this game because mm. you could just go, I'm going to spend points here, here, here. Yeah, that sounds good. If you, you need to look at the statistics and numbers like a DD, Dungeons and Dragons sort of nerd, mm. granted. But there is teamwork. There is, each of the, like I said, each of the characters work with each other. So... You have your tanks, you have your medics, you have your DPS, you have your sort of um, assistant characters. They all do need to work with each other, and so you uh, you can't just go in there and spam all of your attacks. You need to learn which attacks combo with which attacks, which combo with which characters. So there is, I mean, yeah, okay, it's not maybe a dexterity test in terms of skill, but it is a skill in sort of learning the combinations that work with different characters and that is also mm. quite rewarding when you realize oh we're having that control wizard group that mob of enemies in a tight group whilst the other characters now my area of attack is going to do a lot more damage because they're all bunched up you know and so on mm. okay so i mean uh, that so there's no skill but there is strategy there uh, is strategy yeah but, i mean yeah there is learning how to cope with different monsters there is there is uh, a way of engaging it different enemy types, yeah. knowing which ones are going to freeze you, which ones are going to knock you back, which ones are going to poison you. Yeah, there's strategy to it, oh, clearly. But, yeah, I mean, I, I get the strategy, and that is the the bit that would appeal to me. But mm -hmm. when I think of in terms of if I really want to play a strategy game, you know, I'd be like, well, I could play Total War or StarCraft or, yeah. you know, and have much richer depth of strategy that I could be engaging with. Yeah. Um, with much more things I can do. So, uh, like, this kind of... There's nothing. There's still nothing here that set, sets okay. it apart well, for me. There, there is, to say, oh, yeah, yeah. There I'll, is an I'll, element I'll, of roleplay. I, I would... I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be stupid not to mention it. Okay. Now, Dungeons & Dragons... Is all about role play. Okay. It's all about building a character and living and existing in a world. Yeah. Now that world is only going to be as good as its community, mm -hmm. and that community is only going to be as good as your experience. You know who you bring to it. So, if you you know you if you want, I know for a fact that there are role playing guilds on the game. So if you want to get in there and if you want to be you know a female elf. Mm -hmm. And that's your ideal sort of recreation that you totally want to role play it. There are guilds in this game that totally embrace that, and they will they don't go and do things unless the you know that that community mm -hmm. specifically want to. So uh, 
you can role play the game as much as you want to put into it but at the yeah. same time you know you can be halfway through a dungeon and say yeah i'm gonna go out for a coffee i'll be back in five minutes you mm -hmm. know it, there's sort of this sort of a relaxed sort of atmosphere to it as well okay so it doesn't it's not always super intense it's not always combat focused you can have a lot of downtime where you're just you know where you're just hanging out and just talking with each other mm -hmm. uh, like i said it, it's it so it definitely has a huge social aspect to it okay other than the fact that i like i said there is a lot of venomous conversation going on but some of it is also very amusing mm -hmm. so do you think that's where where you the kind of headspace you're going to be in to enjoy this game is you're going to be the kind of person that is looking for a role I you know, you're going yeah. to want to role play. Yeah, if you want to, yeah. I, I play this game both recrea recreationally mm -hmm. and I also play it when I really want to grind a tough dungeon, go for some epic loot. A relaxed role play, I should say. Indeed, a very relaxed role play, yeah. So that, I mean, that's where you'd say it's... So why would you choose this over other MMOs? Well, I... Th it was free. Yeah. Let's say that already. This game was totally, totally free. Yeah, but there's a, big, there's a big trend of these coming out in there. There is, there has been. MMOs. There has been. And, uh, I mean, I, I looked at the reviews for this game when it came out, and it was pretty... It was To be fair, it was above average, and I thought the game wasn't wasn't that great when I first got into it, but for whatever reason, I just kept kept playing. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the le I enjoyed leveling up the character. Uh, As you say, some of your but, friends have gone off and gone played off, Elder Scrolls. Um, I have quite a few friends that have gone off to play Elder Scrolls. I offered them... Uh, the guild that I was in in this game has left, and they've all gone on to Elder Scrolls. Really? Really. Wow. So why would... Why but is the, that then? the What's community Elder numbers Scrolls from got? this game doesn't seem to have dropped. I'm still baffled and, and overwhelmed by the amount of players I'm finding on here. But the thing is, I have... I've got one other person who does play Elder Scrolls that did come back to Neverwinter. Right. Um, I... I he, I don't know why. Um, I have a I have a friend that I play this game with that's just come off Final Fantasy Online. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know that there was a really uh, a, ch a sort of attainable end game for those. Whereas I guess in this one, I I, I don't know. I like I said, I'm I am I am an MMO virgin other than Neverwinter now. Okay. Uh, and so I will praise this game for actually keeping my attention, despite the fact that I said I'd never ever play one. I mean, that's good. that does for me say something about the game, or it just says. You know that there there's a lack of games on the Xbox One of other than Dragon Age, which I did very quickly, mm -hmm. and and The Witcher Three, yeah, for sort of role playing games anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now it's coming pretty close on this tier map battle. So yeah, uh, the next the enemies one, once we've defended these three clerics, it will be a case of trying to uh, bring down to kill all the dragon heads in one go. As I was saying about tactics earlier. <clears throat> a lot of players give give a lot of hate to the clerics in this in this dungeon, especially if using Astral Seal, which as you saw me use in the previous dungeon, I will not use here because it can cause too much lag because it's buffing every character that's standing inside it, which causes a, an amount of lag for, yeah. for whatever reason. That's a real problem. You can't use one your, of your own abilities, abilities yeah. because of the lag. So to this day, there are still people yelling. But the thing is, I'll tell you now, I have I've defeated Tiamat several times when, you know, someone in the zone will be like, clerics, don't use Astral Sealed, and two of the clerics in the room will go, ha, and drop their Astral Seals on the floor, mm -hmm. and you're like, duh, why are you being dicks, and people start getting really irate. Mm -hmm. We still kill Tiamat, no problem. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, but the, the abuse is still hurled out there. <laughs> um, right now, I, I have an ability called Sunburst, which has a knockback effect. And right now, that's getting all the hate on, on Neverwinter because <laughs> you get a huge DPS character that stood there about to hit his enemy with his special attack yeah. and some knobhead cleric's just gone knocked back and so his attack misses and then the enemy comes running back in again. <laughs> but it, it is really, really essential to, to knock back the enemies when the cleric is supposed to be defending his overrun. I'm also going to point out right here at this point, every Tiamat encounter, green... Gem holders are the worst for putting down their gems. <laughs> if if the green gems aren't down, everyone will be poisoned and we die. And all the time we've just put into killing Tiamat failed <laughs> in one instance of one person 
not putting the right coloured gem in front of the right coloured dragon. Yeah, I and noticed you just jumped in front of it when there was poison there. Um, just th like committed to it. Oh, anyway. That one there was the red one that I just jumped into, and I knew that was going to be a fire attack, which I would actually survive. Right now, I'm mm. desperately trying to get up to blue because I have the blue gem to put my blue right. crystal down to prevent everyone, anyone from being electrocuted to death by the blue dragon head. So We've currently got 42 seconds to kill this one to jump over. Well, I actually always jump over. Everyone, a lot of people still run around. You can save so much time by just jumping over. Yeah. I think, I mean, I have not played all the classes yet. I do know that one class in particular raises his shield instead of jumps. Right. So he has to run all the way around as far as I know. Right. Um, but everyone else should just jump over every time. I, I've only fallen off twice, and you can just quickly respawn and run all the way down. But there we go. That was a victory there for Tiamat, which means uh, I get a chance at uh, a random random loot drop. And all the players have dropped right back here. And there's the uh, classic chest room hey. with loads of gold everywhere. I got Linu's Favor, I got a purple, and a shard of soul forged, which I'll probably sell. And look, I finished top of the leaderboards. Me. Hey. Um, clerics, for whatever reason, uh, have... You know, you get placed on the leaderboards for the amount of damage you do or the amount of healing you do. Yeah. And considering I'm healing everyone and people are usually just damaging one target, yeah. I'm kind of going to soak up points. come off better off. Mm -hmm. So, but that was. Uh, that Symbol was, of the Beacon of Faith. It's pretty much just a tier two sort of dungeon item. It's not really worth, worth very much. Uh, the keys to open those chests cost more than all of that stuff in the chest combined, <laughs> worth of selling. Right. So I decided not to take any of that stuff and leave it there. But I am going to celebrate with a bit of air guitaring for <laughs> finishing top of the leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <clears throat> Air guitar in ancient ancient world, eh? Yeah. Maybe it's a loot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot of emotes in the game, um, but you know. So he's using a plectrum, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's his. Uh, that's what he's playing. <laughs> so right now, I'm gonna go and spend all of the diamonds that you saw that I had, and turn them into zen. Right. And then I'm gonna buy. Right now, I've already just purchased my keys. So well, I'm just going like to quickly. A, a I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to show you the Zen market. I've still got my my money. One thousand one hundred twenty-five, which is exactly how much it's going to cost to buy ten enchanted keys. Right. Uh, as you can see, just to buy one, it's one hundred twenty-five. So I'm kind of saving some here. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's my keys. I get that satisfying sound of Chink. you've just spent all your hard-earned money. It took took me about a week to earn all earn all those diamonds for ten keys. You can see right now it's oh 115 pounds for 21,000 zen. That seems expensive. It is. It is very very expensive. But like I said, I've I've not spent any money, and I am I am very highly. I got a high gear score. Not through the roof but yeah. high enough to be able to do all the end game stuff mm -hmm. so here we go i got 95 of these lock boxes i got 10 keys open a box okay not what i was after and uh, not what i was after and uh, nope not what i was after either come on and no nope, not one and okay so that's five boxes and didn't get any of mm -hmm. the rare artifacts okay. Let's go see what was in those those five draconic strong box of enhancement enchantments uh, mark of potency and some other crap Rank six is not very good. Another rank six mark mostly. Not very good. <laughs> okay. I'm not feeling bad yet. I've still still a chance, Jeff. Still a chance. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, that's um yeah, I'll take it. And that is that's pants, really. Okay. That's pants. That's all I got from five Get keys. A bag of riches. So you got a hell of a lot more boxes than you got keys to open the boxes. Like I said, uh, your the lock boxes drop for days. And the keys, as you've just seen, are pretty expensive. So right. what have we got here? Another strong box. Another jewel crafting special pack, which isn't too bad because I'm doing jewel crafting right now. And oh my god, oh my dragon god. scale, dragon scales. Not a lot. I got one key left. <sighs> no uh, artifacts. There, really. No specials. And what did I get in there? Okay, that's that's kind of funky. But some things. To... It's really not worth the key that I used to unlock. No. 
So I got one key left. So that was a week, week's yeah. worth of loot. And what do we got? Oh, compa- companion reinforcement kit is the worst. Is it? Yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah, rank sevens. I can probably sell those for like 4,000 diamonds each. Right. Which... Uh, so uh, what rank were you after? Rank 60? Well, I was after, well, I was after rank 7, 8 stuff if I can. Oh. But right now that's all from, from us. I just want to say thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> we'll be back next Friday with another gaming video. In the meantime, got film reviews going up on Thursdays, uh, other gaming videos on Fridays, sequentials on Saturdays. You can join us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. Take it easy, everyone. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.